All right, now on to some square roots. So with these ones, we simply just want to uh, break them down, simplify them as much as possible. And the first one, I have the square root of 64. So think to yourself, what number would you have to multiply by itself in order to get 64? Well, I have a couple of options. It could be 8 and 8, that would give me 64. Or it could be negative 8 times negative 8. That would also get me 64. Well, we're only interested in the positive values that do so. So let's not worry about those negative 8s. We will say that our uh, answer for the square root of 64 is a positive 8. All right, moving on. The square root of 169 divided by 81. This one, we can use one of our rules and break up the root over the top and over the bottom. Now I can end up taking the root of each of these individually. So what number multiplied by itself would give us a 169? Well, that would have to be a 13. And then the number that would be uh, multiplied by itself to get an 81? 9. So the answer to this one is 13 over 9. All right, continuing on. This one has a negative sign out front, uh, but that is not underneath the root, so I won't worry about it just yet. Instead, let's just really focus on the square root of 36. Well, that would be 6. Then, of course, we'll uh, go ahead and put out our negative sign and see that our final result is a negative 6. All right, one more. This last one involves the square root. So what two numbers, uh, when multiplied together, would give us a negative 49? And remember, they must be the same. Well, we've got a few problems, don't we? Uh, if I try and use 7 and 7, that would give me a positive 49. That doesn't work. If I try and use a couple of negative 7s, that doesn't work. Uh, it still gives me a positive 49. And I can't use one positive and one negative. Even, those, even though those get me a negative 49, those are not the same sign. One's positive and one is negative. So really, what's going on here? Well, if you remember about your types of numbers, this is an imaginary number. So I'll leave that one just as it is until I learn more about simplifying imaginary numbers in some later lessons. All right. So some various different ways that you can go ahead and combine numbers using some very familiar operations. Remember that most of the rules I covered really give you some tips on what to do when they're different in sign. So positive, negative, negative, positive, and all of those will be really handy uh, in figuring out the overall sign of your answer. Thank you for watching. Educator.com